Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and today was a huge day for Ripple and XRP but also for the XRP price. We saw the price go to about $1.10 over on Binance a little bit early today and right now at the time of recording we are still hovering a little bit above $1.00. Having said that, oh boy, oh boy, was it exciting to watch. It was a complete battle and the lawsuit itself, the telephonic hearing, it was definitely very interesting. So in the live, I think we covered almost every single part that was important. However, the end result was also positive, yet I think I missed a couple middle parts and a lot of you guys were most likely not watching. We had like 5.9k people at the peak, it was really crazy. So I thought, you know what, let me give you a little bit of a summary as to what happened. Having said that, there will most likely be some other videos coming out from real lawyers and whatnot. I'm not a lawyer, not an attorney. However, I did watch it with my own two little eyes right here and was listening with my own two little ears right here. Uh, and we were talking about it live. And in the end, I think it's extremely bullish. And today I want to talk about why. Plus explain to you guys what I think about the price and what I think kind of happened. Having said that, there were two main sources that were covering these pieces of news it was james rule xrp and there was another one guy so let me quickly show you guys james here was just posting about every every couple of minutes or so what was happening and there was one more guy who i'm retweeted it was rob xrp he was also posting like a freaking madman right there he got five thousand followers in like uh, i don't know a span of like 20 minutes or so he was going nuts on this so let's quickly check through the the little thread here it started off if you want to kind of update yourself with the lawsuit right Okay, it started, judge asking SEC why Bitcoin, Ethereum assets cannot be discovered. Once more, I know most of this out of the top of my head because uh, I was there. Now, this start, and actually throughout the middle part, mostly what it was about was Bitcoin and Ether, the relevance to, uh, to XRP, and why Ripple thinks it's relevant and why the SEC thinks it's not relevant. That comes back a little bit later, but that's a good part of this, this telephonic hearing. Then what is kind of the middle part, which takes up at least an hour, I believe, of back and forward with these <laughs> lawyers all sounding interesting on their own is mostly, or at least was mostly about Ripple being charged or at least being, being, being told that Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Larson had done these things, these sellings, for example, kind of with intent. And they're talking about the scienter a lot. And they're talking about the uh, I'm not sure exactly what the English words for it are, but they're basically saying that Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Larson knowingly were doing this type of stuff with the intention to really benefit from themselves or harm others, sort of. They knew they were doing something wrong. Now, that was all not too interesting. It turned interesting a little bit towards the end as they went back and forth about whether Bitcoin and Ether dis, um, documents were relevant, yes or no. They really, at the end, came down to, okay, so SEC, since you did not know in a couple of years prior, whether or not XRP was a security, how could my, and again, talking about Chris Larson, my girl guys have known about that? And that's where they didn't really have a proper response. They just kept talking about why it is relevant. And then a little bit later, the SEC started to talk about their inside documents because that was also a part. And those inside documents is actually what's most interesting because the whole motion that we were wanting uh, to kind of get here was basically everything that's relevant to Bitcoin and Ethereum and their developments within the SEC and within custodian kind of talks. Custodian talks meaning, what did the SEC say about XRP specifically, for example, to these exchanges and custodians? And of course, we want to know, what was the SEC thinking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP specifically? Because in the talk, in the call, what we heard was, there was a conference two years ago where Bitcoin and Ethereum were basically discussed to not be security. So a little bit later, however, Bitcoin and Ether were given a whole complete framework of, I think, like 38 points or so as to why they are not securities. However, the question that the lawyer from Rippleside brought up was, why was that never made public? We want to have that. We want to know, right? Because we think we'd actually match on a lot of those bases, where, again, the SEC said that is not relevant. Bitcoin and Ether and XRP are different things. The judge kind of agreed saying, yeah, Bitcoin, Ether and XRP are different things. So why do you need them? And that's kind of a, a lot of the back and forward. Uh, what it kind of came down to to kind of give you the TLDR is the SEC was saying, well, if we give you our internal documents, we're going to have a freaking mayhem inside our, 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 our system, right? So the SEC themselves, they just did not want to give their inside uh, talks about their, just their insights, whatever was going on inside the SEC, they didn't want to give it. Now, uh, the judge was kind of understanding of that, but like, okay, that would mo most likely reach havoc, so let's not go about that. However, the judge also said they did not find the arguments from the SEC's defense side, or offense, I should say, 
good enough as to why they should not be given out the do documents regarding Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that is also why I tweeted out really excitedly, like, hey, we got a partial, um, I guess, motion grant because we got the documents regarding the 19 exchanges or 19 custodians. The judge just said, hey, we're giving them. It's been granted. And, and that was that on that part. The rest, was it all really relevant? Yes, but kind of no. It's kind of the back and forward of stuff we've already heard for a couple of months right now. This was the most interesting part about the price. That right now we will get some information mostly about what exactly hey, we can see here breaking 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 we'll get some information mostly in regards to um what these exchanges were discovering with the sec as that is also one thing that the lawyer brought up that a couple of years ago they didn't know it and they didn't tell any of these guys and also one of the things was fair notice but once more you'll hear about it in different lawyer videos i'm just giving you guys the small rundown sec lawyer says saying a 2018 speech was not an official position by the bitcoin and ether was not a security Discovery by Ripple into the SEC, Bitcoin, Ether, uh, Ether and XRP internal to external information has been granted. That's, uh, that's partially true, I think. Breaking Discovery by Ripple into the SEC, all 90 custodians has been granted. Breaking Discovery by Ripple into the SEC internal, internal has been denied. Yeah, the call has ended. So this is the one I knew for a fact. This is the one I knew for a fact. This one, I don't really know uh, exactly what this is supposed to mean. So, hmm. <laughs> this is the SEC office right now. Uh, it was a crazy call though. So once more, there were five, six thousand people watching. And what I told you guys too is, logically speaking, the price should react positively. Did it do so? Mediocrely. However, the price did not drop like crazy, which could have happened as well. Why? Well, XRP went up a crazy amount just now. It went up a crazy amount in a very short amount of time. We've all seen it happen. And logically speaking, if the lawsuit was bad or if people were not buying because of fundamentals, the price would have dropped like crazy. However, since the price is up this much right now on XP to BTC, but also on an XP to USD basis, I would say they still receive this whole ordeal quite bullishly. And I'm also assuming that a lot of places are asleep right now and a lot of the people don't actually know what happened. Plus, this is quite a normal correction. And you're seeing that in the bigger picture of things, the one hour chart is still looking extremely bullish on XP to USDT. And I'm still assuming that things are going to be trending higher. Look at this, right? We are still in an uptrend going on right now. This is a one hour chart, not really too relevant, but still, whatever chart you put here, things are looking amazing for XRP right now. I am still extremely, extremely bullish. A correction would not hurt me because I'm a long-term holder, as you guys all know. However, as I just explained, things are looking juicy, juicy, juicy. BitThumb right now changing, or ex XRP is exchanging at about $1.20. This also peaked at like $1.30 something, huh? It was really crazy. A lot of volume on here. People were going mad. <laughs> completely mad. We had so much stuff open. This is, by the way, an article written about the motion to compel discovery that has been granted by the judge. However, I think you know everything now. Uh, you know the most important part of everything, which was covered in there. James Rule also covered it mostly. Was it really relevant? Yeah, I guess so. I guess he covered his his his, his due part nicely. Um, we also covered it all on the channel. It was really nice. We got a ton of subscribers today. It's really an amazing day. I just want to quickly say thank you all for stopping by. It was an amazing freaking stream. Five hours long, guys. Oh, reckless was the word I was looking for. The SEC said Ripple was reckless like 15 times or so. It was really crazy. They keep coming back to that one. And this guy, I must admit, he did a really good job at writing the words down properly. Because I tried a little bit, but it's too difficult. Because I was listening, but the legal jargon is not really easy. Plus the fact that it's not my native language. Plus the fact that I also had to talk about it while also being writing it down. It really wasn't working for me. And that's also why I'm saying there will most likely be some guys out there who wrote it down better than I did. I couldn't actually give you a better summary, but... Once more, I'm just looking at what's important for the price. Now, there are a couple of dates which are interesting. We got one more date in the near future. We got a new date for one week in the future. I try to look back, but I was checking through my whole live stream, scrolling, 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 and I could not find exactly what was happening. So I just heard that one week from now, we're going to be seeing something interesting, uh, but exactly what it is, I'm not going to know. All right, it's basically another motion or something along those lines. It's one week from now. Now, we do know that John Deaton's thing is also coming up in like one week or so. Uh, the, the, I believe it's the, just the motion to intervene itself. But again, there might be something else just going to be coming up. If you can find it, let me know in the comments section down below. I will hopefully just, um, heart your comments or at least pin it, something like that. Cause I've been trying to look, but I cannot find it. Another good part of this lawyer was of course about kick back and forth. Once more guys, it was really freaking boring for the most part, but in the end I did kind of enjoy it. <laughs> so yeah, we had a ton of other stuff going on. There were a couple of warnings about live streaming. So we didn't live stream the conference itself. We were just, I was listening to it and talking about what I was finding out. It was really interesting, really cool. 
Jeremy is most likely going to make a video soon. He also posted this out there. Motion to compel, granted, is only half the story. Just get home and get ready to video. Because, man, it's been crazy, man. It's been so crazy. Once more, what I'm seeing here is there's a lot of admissions from the SEC that they're doing stuff wrong. There's once more just confirmation that Ripple is now going to lose this bitch. I don't want to say it, but it is. I'm extremely bullish. I might be bullish more than ever right now. Because I know every single part of this lawsuit is just looking juicy. And that's all I can say for right now. If you have any doubts... You can clear them off because I don't think there's anything negative going on right now. Uh, once more, I might be missing some parts, but I'm extremely bullish right now. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit bamboozled. We've been streaming for such a good while here, but it's a good freaking run, guys. What is going on? What a crazy freaking day. So extremely excited about the future, guys. Let me know down below if you are excited too. See you guys again in another crypto video.